All righty, uh, we'll begin our weekly emergency um, managers meeting uh, for May 1st of 2020. And uh, I, we've got the agenda listed on here as well as on the PowerPoint uh, that will be uh, rotating when uh, it's shown on the town's website. So welcome everyone. And uh, uh, Ron, do you want to give a report for Brad or? Um, I didn't uh, attend the two o'clock yesterday, but I will go over some of the things that came out of it. So I don't, did you listen in on that, Carol, yesterday? I, I did. Uh, so I can, I can give a little bit um, that uh, this uh, state EOC is reporting. Um, there's low, uh, a decrease in incidence of uh, positive cases, and as well uh, as a low incidence of symptomatic uh, cases. The state is going to be increasing uh, their testing. They're going to test mildly symptomatic people, uh, facilities, healthcare personnel and first responders, uh, the Department of Corrections uh, staff and inmates, and child care providers. Uh, and they also listed summer residents. Um, so I'm not sure how that's going to work with, uh, with all the other testing. Um, they're increasing contact testing, um, or contact tracing, and uh, they're still promoting uh, masks and hand washing. Um, there's going to be a, a webinar on uh, on May 7th for uh, navigating finances, and that's put on by SCORE. Um, they've already done one, and, um, oh, I'm sorry, that's not the one that they've done. Um, and uh, the FEMA PPE grant is now open. Um, it's a competitive grant with a fund match. Um, and uh, there's a webinar on, on the Department of Fire Services website. and. Uh, There'll be a second webinar on May 6th. Um, that is all I have from the SEOC. Ron, you can go ahead. Yeah, so after that uh, meeting, the governor had his 11 o'clock this morning and VOSHA had also started to email towns about new protocol for training of employees when they report to the work site. Most employees have and Hyde Park employees have completed the training, which is a I don't know, 10 or 15 minute review of some slides and then certification that you're trained. The fire department, firefighters have been done, uh, most of the town staff and departments. So those are the remainders, just a handful that are due on Monday. And then we'll be in compliance with that. Uh, part two of the um, back to work or restart program is the each business has to have a plan, COVID plan, which is really just a summary of the precautions that you are implementing and what steps people have to follow to report for work. So that plan is being drafted now and that will go out to departments for review shortly, uh, including things like taking temperature if you have a thermometer, which are on back order right now, and then uh, filling out the daily uh, health check form, which is, you know, have you had a fever? Have you been in contact? Those kind of things. If somebody says yes to a series of questions, one or more questions, then they do have to leave and talk to their primary care about whether they should return to work. And of course, if they return to work after leaving to work, we'll probably need some kind of note from their doctor confirming that they actually went and the doctor's okayed uh, the return to work and uh, that they're not under quarantine for 14 days. So that could be a little a little time consuming if somebody thinks they might have, then they have to go to their doctor and not have work that day. But I think that's, that's sort of the intent is to be overly uh, cautious until there's a vaccine or, or medical protocol to follow. Uh, other changes on Monday, going from five to 10 people on construction crews. And I think on May 11th, Manufacturing and construction can go back with as uh, few as a few as few employees as necessary, so that gets rid of the ten max. So it's a uh, last week it was five, this week it's ten on a construction site. Next week it's 
as few as possible following all the protocols. So that I think most businesses that are out in the field and most manufacturing shops will figure out how to hopefully get back to almost full operations by the middle of May. Um, the town still has a vote from the select board about closing all public buildings and facilities. And I expect that the sort of the heat will be turned up a little bit to get the town office open a little bit more than by it's sort of sort of open by appointment by emergency reason right now. And I know uh, just because the governor's conference talked about the fact that they want to see more real estate uh, activity is going to put more pressure on the towns to open up their offices to more activity, which is is, is something we have to talk about still. I'm I, I'm not sure what the what that would mean in a small confined space that the town office is and trying to keep six feet away from everybody, but we'll figure that out. I just expect we'll get more requests for that um, softening. So other than that, I think I'd like to hear from Amy about her, her how her library plans are coming. I, I'm hoping that our highway crew is pretty much back to normal for the summer at this point, especially on Monday, working with contractor crews that can have 10 or more. Um, and the town office and how we ramp that up is, is sort of a big question there, but we'll get to it. So I guess I'll turn it over to Amy if she has something to offer. Through, through Carol, of course, as she texts, yeah. <laughs> as she chats. Um, I'll, I'll read what Amy has uh, texted us. Uh, the library is planning to curbside uh, to resume by May 15th. We are grateful to the town for the guidelines and VOSHA training. Uh, we're erring on the side of caution and the baby step is just curbside. Then, then they'll see from there. Thank you, Amy. Um, is there anything else? That's it for me. Um, Amy also says we're learning more every day about what other libraries are doing and they're trying to make the safest decisions. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Susan. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have for us today? No, I think as, as Ron was saying and um, sort of how we open up the town office a little more. And I think that's probably going to be, it's going to need to be by appointment um, until things are really clear because the space is just too small. Um, you just, you, there just literally isn't the space to have people come walking, you know, in and out. Um, I, I don't, uh, let's see, we can talk about masks later, but everything, again, the town crew looks like it's getting, back to normal things are just kind of things are just kind of starting to creak along so i was uh i was thinking i'm trying to remember um when you go into town hall um is there a plexiglass shield at the um uh, at the desk there no it's uh, there, just a yeah it's a high counter yeah, there's no there's no shield there, but uh, they were ordered uh, probably two weeks ago, and we got a notice from Amazon that they're stuck in shipment somewhere. So I don't know what that exactly means, but um, <laughs> it's a little bit different than delayed. It's almost like they got held up physically, like it was on its way, and it and the boat got stuck or something. So I I don't know if it's going to resolve itself or if that's something that's a delay or if that's going to result in a cancel, but we do need we do need those at both windows, one for the village and uh, one for the front desk at the clerk's office. the The primary goal of those is to prevent uh, or to lessen the need for a mask because um, I think it's an alternative, either a either a plexiglass shield or a mask while you're working. Uh, so I, I, I think if that order doesn't come in, they'll have to wear a mask or a sh face shield when they're in the presence of others in the office. Well, we might be able to um, source some plexiglass locally, possibly, and 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 install it. Um, I, I have 
a couple of pieces of uh, quarter inch plexiglass um, that might suit the bill if, uh, you know, if, if uh, it gets down to that and we need to open and we've got nothing there. Yeah, I'll give Amazon or whoever the shipper is another couple of days and see if that frees up or not. Okay, sounds good. Um, so, um, Melanie. Sorry, it just took me a minute to get off of mute. Um, so we continue at Hyde Park Helpers to be delivering groceries. We had seven more folks this week that we shopped for. And some of them have been re returning folks. And we're noticing that um, for whatever reason, most folks can usually do about a week to 10 days between shops, but um, folks are doing well and the protocols are working and it seems to be pretty smooth. Fabulous. Um, yeah, we feel really good about it. And it's, I must say that it's just been really heartwarming to see how um, appreciative folks are um, on both sides, people that are receiving the groceries and also the people that are you know, feeling good about doing something for the community. And um, it's been a real um, easeful last couple of weeks, even with Easter and the frenzy to get hands. <laughs> so things are good. Yes, it, it's it's definitely nice to know when you're, that you're um, you know, helping out your neighbors and uh, it makes people feel good. Um, knowing that everyone is is helping each other. I, I think it's a, a great function you're doing. Thanks so much, Anart. We can't just a shout out to all of our volunteers. They've um, really continued to show up, which is great to have that continuity. And then some people have become that personalized shopper. That was just what we kind of hoped would happen so that they would become familiar with the people's needs and be able to have that relationship. So that's been very nice. And I think it's um, made some connections with people that they didn't know each other before, but now are probably going to try to visit after everything is lifted. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Um, let's see. Uh, Roger or Roland, do either of you have anything? Um, um, I don't. I don't have nothing. I was just taking everything no, in there. I'm just waiting to see how they go open up to show some gathering. Um, gathering. Uh, trying to make a decision here on Lamar County Field Days. Uh, we're going to make a decision, uh, decision on it on May 12th. I know the TV said May 1st, but it's May 12th. Ah. Whether we're going to hold it or not. Okay. Yep, that take a bit of planning. Um, Paul, do you have anything new for us? I don't know if I have anything new except to share the, that um, we're doing we're doing real well with our I call partners now the High Park Helpers. It seems to be working real well as usual. I'm really pleased with that project. Um, I'm thankful that we're being able that we're able to um, get involved with uh, the mask um, delivery and system and and uh, in the production of them. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to continuing that endeavor. Um, we just delivered the Sterling View here, a, a box to Carol uh, earlier today of 50 masks. And um, we're looking forward to getting uh, considerable more over the next few days. And uh, as we, produ as we produ uh, proceed along with this project, as we need more, um, uh, the, the girls here are saying, you know, just let us know. And we'll do the best we can to, to, to provide more masks. Um, elastic is the big is is the thing we're running short on here so if anyone knows where uh, we could get get some uh, elastic for the sewers that would be good um, and other than that i think we're we're doing well here in the park we've avoided um having any uh, virus positive people here that reside um, and that's a big deal for us as you can well imagine um, I'm also quite pleased for the whole town. Um, it's uh, these small, smaller communities have fared very well. They've coerced and worked together, and, and and I think that's a a great, uh, it's a big result of our uh, leadership here in the state. I think it's shown itself well, and I'm, I applaud what 
what uh, you folks are doing in the town offices and, and seeing to it that we're all on the same page. It's a, this has been a good, uh, a good part of uh, the process of governance that I'm proud to be a part of. So thank you, that's all I got. Well, thanks, Paul. And um, we might as well um, get the mask, as you mentioned. Um, Paul delivered 50 today, and uh, another woman has uh, another 30 uh, that I'm going to pick up either later today or tomorrow, um, waiting till she gets back to me. Um, and as far as materials go, uh, there was a posting on uh, Stowe's front porch forum, and I responded to it, and uh, the woman has uh, more elastic than she can um, she can sew masks for and also I believe some fabric and so um, she's going to donate it to us and uh, I'll be meeting her sometime uh, this week to pick it up uh, when she comes to Morrisville I'll be picking it up from her uh, so we will have some more materials uh, how much I'm not sure but you know any any bit helps um, today uh, we we delivered a total of 16 masks uh, between Susan and myself. And um, we have uh, quite a few more. I believe the list is up close to about 30. Uh, is that correct, Ron? Yes, uh, 31, I think, right now for the next round. So we have... Uh, um, enough masks for for this next round and um, and possibly the round after that. Um, so that's that's going well. People are requesting them and uh, and we're getting them out to them. Um, so I, th I think that's going well and hopefully will continue to go well. Um, that's all I have uh, regarding the masks. Um, does uh, Susan or Ron anything to add? I was just going to say if um, Ron or Carol, if you're talented, if you'll design up like a little, you know, just goes on a regular sheet of paper, notice about, you know, here's the number you can call if you want. And if you send it to me, I'll print it out and go put it up on the um, on the bulletin board at the post office because we'll pick up a lot of people that way. Oh, yeah, I could do that. I have, um, I have a little bit of that prepared so I can just pull something together and email it to you. Yeah, okay, and I'll print it out and get that up because again, lots of folks do front porch for them, but a lot of them don't. Obviously, people are listening to Roland, <laughs> as we all knew, so, and and again, I think as, as, uh, as, the, as we start to open up more, and again, the governor and everybody, you know, you really need to have masks, you need to have masks. Um, as people start to venture out of their houses, I expect there'll probably be, you know, in this next week, a good demand for people looking for, looking for masks because <laughs> you're not going to find them in any store. Now, I had one, uh, one person that emailed today saying, I've been waiting and waiting for my Amazon order. And today they just told me they can't help me that it was canceled. So I think some of that's going on too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, Ron, is is there a sign at the uh, the the meeting room door at town hall regarding masks? I don't know if there's that many signs up yet. We did the uh, front porch forum. We did the radio, and I think Susan is correct by trying to get both post offices done, and and town office upper and lower would be good, and then. I don't know, this, the sheriff's office. I, we can think of a few places to put the posters up. Yeah, uh, I was just thinking um, regarding the, the woman that showed up when I was dropping off the masks. Um, and uh, she said she didn't have a computer. Um, and so when uh, um, people walk up, if they go to either one of the doors and uh, can see what to do if, if they need a mask, that, that would be helpful. Um, Amy is yeah. saying text that uh, she would uh, she can put it on the town's website and if we send her an uh, email or a poster she'll put it on the uh, church street door of the library as well what is, what is, is is there any kind of referral as we get 
questions from Johnson or Mooresville people or wherever. Is there a referral that's like this? I don't I don't know of any other towns that are doing it. So like we can't really refer them to anybody but the clerk's office, I guess. Yeah, Stowe has a has a pretty uh, uh, fancy system and uh, have been churning out quite a few masks and, and they mailed them to their um, residents. Um, beyond that, I'm not sure about Johnson. Um, Amy is going to ask about that for Johnson. Eric, I just wanted to, you know, eventually if this if like Susan said, if the re, if the mandate goes on and on, we may have right now we're sort of limiting it to the first time, you know, one person per household. But as time goes on, it might be, you know, second and third requests or, you know, people trying to get some for their friends. So we, I just don't want to get overwhelmed by, you know, having other towns coming here so soon, but um, want to give them a referral if we once we find them. Right. Well, there are the donations um, to the businesses, of course, um, through um, Healthy Lamoille Valley, and uh, but obviously that's not hitting the the residents. Maybe once they've got, um, they've given them to um, all the businesses that are asking. Perhaps they can shift gears to um, either giving them directly to residents or or giving them to groups that can give them to the residents. Uh, did you speak to Jessica, Ron? No, I have not. Okay. So that, that might be an avenue um, once we get to that point. Yeah, and I, I think the idea of referring people to their town clerk initially is probably a good thing to do. Because the town clerks start getting requests and they may go, okay, I mean, then people looking, they're going to see that we're doing it and maybe other communities will start to do the same thing. Yeah, maybe I'll even put that on our posters uh, suggestion, because I know that that's, you can't go wrong doing that one. You know, let people know that there's a need in their own town if they're coming here first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to let people know if they're interested, the Johnson Select Board holds their uh, weekly at five o'clock. And if somebody wanted the contact information or login information for that, you can send me a quick email and I can forward their email to you so you can see what other towns are doing if you're interested. All right, thank you. Also, I noticed most of the stores now that require you to put them on before you come in. Yeah. So they're going to need a lot more of them before we're done. Yes. Yep. We went to um, to uh, the the, uh, the dump in Johnson today, and some some were wearing them, some weren't. Um, the employees were certainly uh, wearing them, which was good to see. Um. So if we're done with mass, does anybody have any additional questions uh, or announcements? Yeah, this is Michael from Greenmount Access Television. Uh, hey, Michael. Question for Roger Odette. The May 12th decision on field days, uh, we cover a lot of those events every year. Is Gene the best contact for that, or is there a better contact this year for finding out the final result? Well, Gene's good. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Well, then, uh, if there's no additional que questions or announcements, um, and offline, we will be uh, communicating more about the um, getting masks and delivering them. Um, any other offline tasks that uh, we need to mention? I'll do the follow up with Jessica just to see what the, their group is doing if their if their business needs are being met and if they're opening up to residential connections like you know connecting with us if we run into a supply need or something. Okay. Alrighty then. Well, if uh, there's nothing else, uh, I think we've uh, 
made a record here with our meeting that just barely uh, almost half an hour. Um, so with that, I'll thank everyone for coming today and uh, we will uh, talk again next week, if not before. Stay safe and stay healthy. Super. Thanks a lot. Everybody have Thanks a nice everybody. weekend. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy. Have a good, have a good weekend, weekend, everybody. Thank you.